Hello everyone, myself Purushottam, working as assistant professor in Department of Computer Science and Engineering, MLRIT. So today, I am going to discuss about object oriented programming. Now, this is the today's agenda. First, I will discuss introduction to object oriented programming. Next, I will discuss the basic terminologies in object oriented programming. Next, object oriented principles and last, I will discuss sample execution of Java program. So let's get started today's session. So first, what is the object oriented programming language? So, object oriented programming is a paradigm that provides some features called abstraction, encapsulation, inheritance and polymorphism. Means, it is a par paradigm is nothing but it is a pattern or it is a design and it is providing some features or some concepts. The concepts are nothing but abstraction, encapsulation, inheritance and polymorphism. Means, if any language, if it supports these four principles, if it supports these four principles, simply we can say that it is an object oriented programming language. Java is an object oriented programming language since it is a following these four principles. Python is an object oriented programming since it is a following the four principles. In true object oriented programming, everything will be treated as an object. Suppose if you take an example, if you take an example like a Python. So, Python is a truly object oriented programming language. Of course, it is a both procedure oriented and object oriented. So, whenever you are using the object oriented approach, so Python is everything will be treated as an object. So, in truly object oriented programming, everything will be treated as an object. So, in market, so what are the object oriented programming languages we have means in market, we have different types of programming languages are available, object oriented programs are available. So, best example Java, Python, C sharp, C++, Ruby and Kotlin. So, why all these are object oriented programming language means all these programming languages are supporting these four principles. So, we can say all these programming languages are object oriented programming languages. In object oriented programming, every time we will use a two terminologies basically the class and object. So, now we will see what is a class and what is a object. So, first of all, we will see what is a class. A class is nothing but it is a blueprint or it is a design or it is a model for the object. Means, if you want to create any object, we required a blueprint or we required a design or we required a model. So, based on the model or based on this design, we can build any object. So, that is the meaning of this statement. Suppose, if you take an example, like suppose if you are constructing any house, okay, we required a plan. Now, the plan here act as a class. Now, house will be what object? So, suppose if you take an example, see here. Here, it is a house is a, this part is nothing but it is a plan. Now, based on this plan, you can construct a house. Any number of constructors, n number of, sorry, any number of objects, n number of objects you can build by using this class. So, for class, you can create any number of n number of objects. See here, here I have only one class. The class, this is the design part and this is a real object. So, we can say that object is nothing but it is a instance of a class. Suppose if you take one more example, suppose if you want to build or if you want to manufacture any car. So, first of all, we require a design. Now, the design is nothing but simply we can call it as a, a class. Now, if you have one class, you can create n number of objects. Now, here you can see this is a red color, it is a green color and it is a purple color car. Means, object to object, so data may be vary, but you can see the outline of this object is the same. It must follow this class. Means, uh, in programming, you have what class level data and you have object level data. Class level data, we can represent by using the static variables, static members and object level data instance members. By using instance members, you can use object level data. Now, so now we will see what exactly object. So, just now I explain. So, object is nothing but it is a physical existence of the class. It is only the physically existed. Means, a class just is a imaginary part. It is not a real part, it is just an imaginary part. 
Now the object is nothing but it is a physical existence of a class or in other terminologies we can say it is a real world entity. Means if you take a previous example here the class just a, it is an imaginary part it will not exist in the real world but a car will be exist in the real world and we can say this is a real world entity. So object definition is nothing but object is a physical existence of a class or in another terminology we can say it is a real world entity. So here for every object you will have the state and the behavior. So if you are taking an example uh, in world you have what the different types of object. If you take any example like suppose if you are taking pen, the pen is a physical existed. Mouse, mouse is a physical existed, keyboard, laptop, etc. So, all these are, are physical existed in the world. So, we can say these are the objects. Now, the same you can write the programmatically. Now, we will see in uh, how to create a class and how to create an object, we will see in programming. Now, suppose if you take an example, the class. So, how to create a class, now we will see. So, first, uh, we will see class syntax. So, this is the class syntax. Here, first of all, if you want to create a class, you need to use the class keyword. After that, we need to use class name. Now, the class name can be any valid identifier. You need to follow valid identifier rules. So, class name can be anything. You can write any valid identifier. Class and class name you need to take. After that, you need to take the attributes and we need to take the behaviors. Now, what about the attributes and the behavior means? Attributes are nothing but variables. Attributes are nothing but the variables and behaviors are nothing but methods. In class, the data will be stored in the form of variables and methods. So, if you want to represent the attribute, you need to use the variables. If you want to represent the behavior or task, you need to use the methods. So, that is the syntax of the class. Now, here to work with Java, at least one class is a mandatory. So, how to create a class and what are the naming convention of the class? Suppose here I am taking the class, class sample. Now, here S must be capital, means a class naming convention as per uh, Java coding standards, you need to follow these rules. So, class naming convention means the class name must be started with a capital letter. So, here the class name is a sample, S must be capital. Suppose if you are taking the multi word, like suppose I have one more class, the class like max value, max value. Here, two words are there like max is one word and value is another word. So, every word starting letter must be capital. So, here the max and value. So, M must be capital and V must be capital here. So, this is the naming convention of the class and class name must support a valid identifier means suppose if you are taking the class name like 1, 2, 3 sample. So, this is the invalid. Why means it is a violating identifier rules. So, as we know that identifier rules like every identifier must be contains alphabets. Every identifier should start with uh, alphabets. It should not start with a digit. All uh, identifier may contains a digit, but it should not start with a digit. So, allowed special characters are like uh, underscore and a dollar. A space character is not allowed. So, we have some other rules also there. We will discuss in the coming session. Now, suppose if you are taking like 1, 2, 3 sample, this is invalid. Why means here, this is sample class is a starting with a digit. This is invalid. Why means it is a violating identifier rules. So, compulsory, you need to take the valid identifier like, so class uh, test, this is a valid. Why means the class is a starting with alphabets and it is starting with a capital T. So, Naming convention is rules are optional means if you are taking like class sample small s also it will work but it is not recommended to use see here here I am using small s but this small s if you are taking also it will work fine no problem 
but it is not good programming practice as per code, java coding standards you need to follow java naming convention so here whenever you are taking a class the class name must be start with a capital letter suppose if you are taking a a must be capital and if you are taking class small a also no problem it will vary so in both cases both are valid but what is the recommended one means the first one is a recommended one now so this is about the class now what about the object now how to create a object so to create a object we need to follow this syntax first of all we need to write the class name next we need to write the reference name next we need to write the constructor means new operator after that the constructor this part is called the constructor so this is the syntax for creation of object right now suppose i want i have a class suppose i have a class the class class is a, a sample class name is a sample now i want to create object to this class so as per object syntax first of all we need to take sample yes equals to new sample now this is the object of this class now this is the class and it is a object now here this is a class and it is called the reference it is a new operator and this part is called a constructor so this is called the class name and this is called the reference name and it is a new operator or new keyword and it is constructor suppose if you compare uh, this object creation with normal variable declaration suppose if you are taking like int a equals to some 10 now the 10 is actual value now 10 will be assigned to variable and the variable type is nothing but integer now this right side value only the actual value so this is the actual value this is the actual value same the way if you compare a uh, variable declaration with object see here this right side part is the actual value means this will only store in the physical memory okay this part never store in the physical memory means whenever you are creating an object so that will be that will be stored in the heap area so suppose a class sample i'm creating again so if you are creating object to be class s equals to new sample so whenever you are creating object what will happen means so as we know that in jvm you have what different types of memories like you have heap area method area stack area and pc registers now whenever you are creating object to the class now this part will be stored inside heap area so all object data okay whatever object you are creating for any class so all object data will be stored only in heap area so whenever you are creating a variable int suppose i equals to some 10 now so this variable will be stored in the physical location it may store in heap area it may store in method area it may store in a stack area means it depends on the variable type some so you know uh, we have different types of variables like local variables sta uh, static variables instance variable suppose if it is i is an instance variable it will store in heap area suppose if i is a, a static variable it will store in method area suppose if i is a local variable it will store in stack area right so depends on i means if i is a instance variable then it will store in heap area if i is a static variable it will store in method area if i is a local variable it will store in stack area 
so variables will be stored in different different location but the object will be stored in only heap area so that is the meaning of the statement now whenever you are creating object so what will happen it will create a, a space in the heap area and s will be point to that now s is the reference whenever you are creating object it will create a, some space and this object is a referring with this reference that is the meaning of this one and here this reference can be anything this reference can be again any valid identifier any valid identifier that is the meaning of the statement so that is about the class and object means again if you want to work with java so at least one class is a mandatory so to create a class you need to use the class keyword after that the class name and inside if you want to represent the attribute you need to use the variables and if you want to represent the behaviors you need to use the methods after creation of the class you need to create object now how to create object means you need to follow this syntax again so here class name after that the reference name and new keyword and constructor you need to follow this syntax okay so before that the class and object here I have a class. The class name is a student, and here name, roll number, and age. These are called attributes. These are called attributes, and method details means it is a method. Now, here I want to access this details means I want to access the student detail. If you want to access anything in the class, so first of all you need to create the object to the class. that is the first step so here i created object to the class now the reference is yes so here the object creation of the class so class name is student student the reference name can be anything here i'm taking yes after that the new keyword next constructor so it is a created object after that you can access anything in the class now here i'm accessing only the methods but still you can access you can access name you can access roll number you can access age means whenever you are creating object this class what will happen means it will create a some space in the heap area and it will point to this object now whenever you are creating object what will happen means this this is called the instance members no static keyword so it is a instance members so when instance data will be uh, initialized means whenever you are creating object to the class so all instance data will get initialized means here the name name will be ram next roll number 1 2 3 4 5 6 next h equals to 25 so when this data will get initialized means whenever you are creating object to the class then your instance data will get initialized now the data is initialized here so after that if you are calling a details okay so you have one more that is a method also details method the method also now if you want to access anything in this object so just use a reference now i want to access the name so yes dot name you need to use if you want to access the roll number yes dot roll number you have to write next if you want to access age yes dot age you need to use and if you want to access the method also you need to use yes dot details okay so that is about a class and object example now so coming to object oriented principles here as i mentioned we have uh, object oriented principles like abstraction encapsulation inheritance and polymorphism means as i mentioned if any language if it supports these four features we can say that it is a object oriented programming language so object oriented programming uh, follows compulsory follows this four features abstraction encapsulation inheritance and polymorphism now we'll see what is abstraction encapsulation inheritance and polymorphism one by one now first i will explain the abstraction now what is the abstraction means abstraction is nothing but the providing essential features without inner details means hiding internal implementation and shows only essential information to the user suppose if you take an example 
like suppose in general example i'm explaining suppose if you are visiting any atm so atm it will display what list of options like balance inquiry like pin change withdrawal something now suppose when you uh, selecting the balance inquiry option it must display the balance only okay so being a user we require this functionality only okay so we were not required means internal implementation is not required being a user only essential functionality is what it must displaying this balance or not we need to verify okay internal implementation is not required means what kind of query it is calling what instruction it is uh, executing what kind of method it is executing so that is not required being a user you required only essential information that is what only balance inquiry means in abstraction if you want to achieve this abstraction so here we need to use abstract classes abstract classes and interfaces so abstract classes interfaces and abstract methods we need to use to achieve abstraction so this abstraction mainly talks about the data hiding abstraction mainly talks about the data hiding means it will hide internal implementation and it will shows only essential information to the user that is the meaning of this uh, abstraction now how to achieve abstraction in java means using this techniques using abstract class using abstract methods using interfaces you can achieve abstraction in java now suppose if i take an example here so before going to this example suppose i have a method like public void m1 this is the method this is a complete method so this is the essential part and this is the implementation of this method i don't want to this implementation part i don't want to this implementation part i want to only m1 means i want to hide this internal implementation now public void m1 only required but if you write like this it will throw error why means if you are declaring a method the compulsory implementation is required so for this we need to declare this method with abstract keyword so it becomes abstract method so if any class if it contains at least one abstract method suppose the class a abstract void m1 assume here i have m1 method m1 method and it is a abstract now if any class if it contains at least one abstract method compulsory you need to declare that class with abstract keyword okay now it becomes abstract class now this is the abstract method and it is a abstract class okay so i will explain uh, this abstraction concept coming videos okay we have detail session is there so i will explain now if you take an example so here i have a class the class name is a parent now the parent class are having a method m1 method now this m1 method is a incomplete method means abstract method so compulsory you need to declare with abstract keyword and class contains if at least one abstract method so compulsory you need to declare that class with abstract means if you are having any abstract class directly object creation is not possible now unimplemented method should be implemented inside a child class now this is unimplemented method m1 this m1 should be implemented inside a child class now here i created a child class here now child and parent so here i am using extends keyword inheritance concept so child and parent now the child is responsible to unimplementing sorry child is responsible to implementing this method means the parent class unimplemented method is m1 this method compulsory must be implemented inside child class so here i implemented now by creating object of the child class you can access this information so that is a abstraction program so again so this abstraction concept and all these concepts again i will explain we have detail sessions are there so i will explain there next encapsulation so what is encapsulation encapsulation is nothing but wrapping up of a data into a single unit is nothing but the encapsulation so here the data is nothing but the variables and methods 
Now, how to achieve encapsulation means by using class. By using class, you can achieve encapsulation. So, here by using class and by using packages, you can achieve encapsulation. Okay. Now, the encapsulation mainly talks about the data protection and the data binding. Okay. As I mentioned, encapsulation definition is implies that it is a wrapping up of a data into a single unit. Means it is a binding the data. Means the data here is nothing but variables and method. As we know that the inside a class, how your data will be stored means your data will be stored by using the variables and the method. Okay. So if you are binding these variables and method as a single unit, that is nothing but encapsulation. Okay. So this you can ex uh, we can explain by using this uh, diagram means the capsule principle. So suppose if you take a general uh, capsule, a capsule as we know that inside a capsule you will contain some medicine. Now the capsule, the this outer layer uh, act as a protective barrier. Okay, it will protect inside a medicine. It will protect inside a medicine. That is the meaning of this capsule. Means here, if you apply the same capsule principle to object-oriented programming, so it is nothing but encapsulation. Now this outer part, outer layer is nothing but the class, and here inner part is nothing but the method and variables means the class always binding methods and variables that is the meaning of this diagram suppose if you take an example here a class here i created a class the class name is a student now the class is the best example for encapsulation now here you can see these are the attributes and these are the behaviors means this is the variables and this is the method so, as per the programming definition of the class, the class is nothing but it is a collection of data members and member functions, means a collection of variables and a collection of methods. Now, this class is a binding this variables and a method here. So, class is the best example for what encapsulation. Now, so coming to inheritance. Now, what is the inheritance? So, inheritance is nothing but acquiring the properties from the parent class to the child class is nothing but inheritance now <coughs> here suppose if you take an example the parent and child so child always getting the properties from the parent so suppose if you take a general example so child always getting the properties from the parents so child can get properties like natural properties and artificial properties from the child sorry parent means natural properties so what are the natural properties a child can get means child can get a properties like uh, he may get color of the parents genes of the parents next uh, a blood group of the parents So, these are the natural properties. Now, what are the artificial properties? So, child can get artificial properties also like money, gold, land. So, these are the artificial property child can get parents. So, these are the natural properties. Natural properties are maybe a color, parent, a child may get a color, child may get a genes, child may get the blood group. So, these are the natural properties and what about the artificial properties means child may get money, child may get gold, child may get a land. So, these are the artificial properties. So, suppose if you apply the same uh, concept programmatically, suppose the parent P and C is nothing but a child. Now, assume the parent class having suppose some thousand LOC, thousand lines of code. So, thousand lines of code directly will get to this child okay so how means if these two classes are in the parent and child relation no need to create an object so directly you can get this lines of code so that is the advantage of using inheritance so inheritance mainly talks about inheritance mainly talks about the code reusability the main advantage of using uh, uh, inheritance means code reusability now, so how can we achieve inheritance in Java? By using extends keyword, we can achieve inheritance in Java. Suppose if you take an example, here, 
suppose assume I have a class. Now class is a P and I have one more class, the class is a C. Now it is a parent class and it is a child class. Now there is no parent and child relation here. To establish the parent and child relation, you need to use extends keyword, extends P. Now, so this becomes a child and this becomes a parent. Now, suppose a parent having some code like suppose a parent having suppose assume 1000 lines of code. So, this 1000 lines of code you no need to rewrite inside a child class directly you can access. So, that you can save what a time and you can save money and you can decrease the project cost. Okay, so that is the main advantage of using what inheritance. So, how to achieve inheritance means by using extends keyword you can achieve inheritance in Java. So, suppose if you take an example here, here I have a class, class P and here I have a class C. Now, using extends keyword you can achieve what inheritance in Java. Now, C is nothing but uh, child, and P is nothing but the parent. Now, the parent having one method, M1 method and child having M2 method. Now, child indirectly having M1 also means by creating object to the child, you will get both M1 and M2. See here, here I created object to the child and you can access both M1 and you can access M2. But if you are creating object to the P, you can access only M1, vice versa is not possible. Means, child can get a properties from the parent, but parent never get its properties from the child. Next principle, the polymorphism. So, polymorphism, it came from a Greek word. A poly means, poly means many, morphos means the forms, means many forms. A polymorphism is nothing but the main, main, many forms. Means, what is the definition of the polymorphism means ability to show more than one form is nothing but a polymorphism. Suppose if you take an example, a person, a person is a student. When he enter into the classroom, his role is a student. When he enter into the cricket ground, his role is a cricket player. When he enter into the home, his role is a son. Now, so depends on the situation, this person role is a changing. Here the role 1 is a student, role 2 is a critical player, role 3 is a son. Person is only one, but his behaviors are changing according to situations. Means, when he enter into the class, his role is a student. When he enter into the cricket ground, he is a critical player. When he enter into the home, he is a, a son. So, these are the different roles. Here the role 1, role 2, role 3. Means, different behaviors. So, so, what is the polymorphism? Polymorphism is nothing but ability to show more than one form is nothing but the polymorphism. Now, how to achieve the polymorphism in Java means you have what uh, method overloading techniques, constructor overloading technique and method overriding technique. So, method, oh, sorry, polymorphism mainly talks about multi forms, multiple forms. Suppose if you take an example, method overloading okay so i will explain with the method overloading so method overriding constructor overloading again i will explain the coming sessions we have detailed sessions are there so i'll explain there now coming to the method overloading now what is a method overloading so first of all method overloading is nothing but rewriting a method with a different method signatures are nothing but method overloading now here i'm taking the class name as a method overloading you can take any name no problem so here i declared a method is add 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 here as i mentioned method overloading definition rewriting a method with a different method signature here the method signature here two arguments it is taking that is an integer type here three arguments it is a taking that is an integer type again and here it is a taking two arguments and it is a float type so, whenever you are working with uh, method overloading, so this arguments must be different means order of arguments, number of arguments and types of arguments must be different. Now, here you can see here or uh, number of arguments is a 2 and here is a 3. So, 
no problem here two and here also two but type is a different here it is an integer and here is a float so still it is a method overloading only now here here i am passing 10 and 20 10 and 20 means it is an integer and integer means two arguments so what is the exact match the first method is the exact match so this part will be executed next here 10 20 30 means integer comma integer comma integer so total three arguments so what is the exact match so this is the exact match this is the exact match so why means here you have what three arguments now here 10.50 f and 20.50 f means float float so total two arguments here is a two argument here is a two, two arguments but the type is what float and float here, this is not a float and float so this is the float and float so this method will be executed in this case method is only one add only one but this behaviors are changing a situation means if you are passing two argument integer it is executing first method if you are passing three argument integer it is executing second method if you are passing two argument float value it is executing this part means so depends on the situations your method behaviors are changing so that is the meaning of method overloading so method overloading is nothing but it is a one of the polymorphism technique so it is a compile time polymorphism the compiler will be takes method resolution based on this reference okay so again the, this method overloading uh, we have detailed sessions are there so we'll discuss there in detail so that's about object oriented principles so what are the object oriented principles again so we have the four object oriented principles abstraction encapsulation polymorphism and inheritance so abstraction mainly talks about the data hiding inheritance mainly talks about code reusability polymorphism mainly talks about multiforms next abstraction mainly talks about the data hiding now so coming to execution of the sample java program okay so here first of all we need to create a java program after that we need to compile your java program and whenever you are compiling a java program you will get the dot class file so how many dot class file it will generate means it depends on this file suppose if file contains three classes three dot class file it will generate if file contains only one class and it will generate only one dot class so depends on the file it will generate the dot class file now how it will generate the dot class file means the compiler compiler will be compiles and whenever you are calling this command java c command c stands for the compiler c stands for compiler means whenever you are using this command automatically this compiler program will be called now what is the duty of the compiler means it will compile your program it will convert your high level program into what machine understandable from and it will generate what dot class file now the dot class file will be generate so how many dot class file will be generate means it is a depends on your java program means if java program contains a three classes and it will generate the three dot class file if java program contains only one class it will generate only one dot class file now so after getting a dot class file you need to hand over this dot class file to the jvm now the jvm is responsible to execute your java program okay again the jvm architecture concept is there again i will explain the what is a jvm and how uh, jvm works uh, with a dot class file and everything i will explain coming sessions now as of now this jvm takes input to or the dot class file and it will execute the output okay and the jvm always search for whenever you are using this command java command so whenever you are using java command automatically jvm program will be called and jvm always search for main method the main is a means public static wide main so here whenever you are uh, using this command always jvm search for main method and it will execute the program okay so i will explain the sample program sample java program so how to work with the java program now we'll see so first of all we need to create a, a folder 
so here i created a folder so after that we need to take a notepad so here i'm taking a notepad so here i'm taking the class class the class name can be anything any valid identifier you can take so here i'm taking so class name is a test so after that class can be empty but here i'm taking what method public static void main string args so hello world so this is the first java program okay every programming uh, language will start with the hello world no so will execute this program now how to execute this program means so first of all we need to write the program after that so here the class name is a test now you need to save your file save as so whatever the class name you are taking the cl same class name here you can take different also you can take but so beginner level you can take it is recommended to take what whatever the class name you are taking the same class name here you have to take now here now a java file is created here you can see here the java file is created now i want to compile this program now whenever you are compiling your program so how to compile your program so type cmd command so java c space test test is a class name so class name here you have to pass now after successful compilation no if no errors in your program so it will generate a dot class file means after successful compilation it will generate the dot class file you can see here test dot class it, it is generating dot class file so it contains a byte code it is not a human readable form you can see here it is a byte code so this is called the byte code the dot class file contains a byte code now this byte code we need to hand over to jvm now how to call the jvm here we need to use a java command java space your dot class file name is a test so test you have to pass now if you call test now you can see here it will execute hello world program now suppose in your class suppose in your file contains multiple classes like class a class b okay so here in this file total three classes one is the main class that is a test and second one is a a and b now if you are performing any changes in a file compulsory you need to save and again you need to run now first uh, compile use up arrow compile now after compilation after successful compilation again it will generate the dot class file now in my case the three classes are there so three dot class file it will generate a dot class b dot class and test dot class means how many classes in your file okay that many dot class file it will generate okay now this dot class file only we need to hand over to jvm now which dot class file we need to hand over to jvm means so here three dot class files are there but what about main dot class means main method contains only test dot class so compulsory you need to start from test dot class means you need to write like this like java space the test only you need to pass now it will print hello world program okay so that's about today's session thank you